have three major grapes in Croatia. You have in uh, Slavonia, going out towards the Danube, you have Grashovina, which is Welsh Riesling. Um, then in uh, going down to Dubrovnik, down the Dalmatian coast, um, Dalmatia is famous for a big red wine called Plavats Mali, which means Plavo, blue, Mali, little, little blue grape. And that's a big red wine, lovely, fruity, dry red wine. And then in Istria, which is this tiny little peninsula, very heart-shaped peninsula near Italy, um, which was part of Italy for many years um, until the Second World War, Malvasia, Istrian Malvasia is is the local grape so this is their most important one even though it's the smallest part um, for us this was the one that we wanted to concentrate on in the beginning because it was the wine that we felt the British market would identify with the most because it's much more it's much more commercial it's easy to um, it's easy to drink it's easy to pair with food and it was a, a little bit <laughs> it's it's commuter time <laughs> So, and it was a little bit like... So it, 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 we used to say to people, when, when they'd say, well, what is it like? We'd say, well, you know, when you go to, um, to Venice and you're sitting outside um, uh, the, in Friuli or v the Veneto and you're drinking something like a Pinot Gris or a Sauvignon Blanc, this is our Sauvignon Blanc. So this was our dry white wine. It's crisp, it's light, it's fresh, it's slightly citrusy. It's a lovely summer wine, but you can also get it aged very well. It, it goes well with oak, it goes well with acacia. Um, long skin contact as well, so you can make fantastic natural wines from it. So it's really adaptable and really versatile. You put a lot of thought into it because the thing is, the Malvasia is the, initially the most accessible white wine to the British market because they have something in their head which they can adjust to it. If you go down much further down south, the wines become bigger, they become stronger because it's hotter. Higher alcohol, Higher so you alcohol. get something like Poship, which is a white wine, which is a lovely white wine, but it can have a lot of big, heavy alcohol content. It's very difficult as a first grape from Croatia to try to get someone to drink, a, say, a 14 or 15 percent white wine. Um, whereas here, Malvasia, you can make 11.5%, 12%, up to 13.5% as usual. Um, it, it's, and it's light, it's fresh. Um, it, it, uh, you look at something like Gelatina, another white wine from uh, down on the Dalmatian coast, again, big alcohol. So you've got to think of everything. You, ca you can't just go into it lightly and just say, oh, that was nice, we'll see if we can sell some bottles because it, you've got to look at the British palette and how mm -hmm. it changes um, and, and what it will go with. So y you have to put in a lot of thought. It's a commercial decision. Yeah. You, you have to make a commercial decision. And yeah, I mean, like, I love crazy wines. I just love them. I mean, I would spend all day trying to buy crazy wines. But I'd never sell a bottle. I'd have to end up drinking them all, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. Probably really. why, he, yeah. why he buys them. Yeah. <laughs> The, the reds, you have Turan and Rifosk. Um One of our winemakers many years ago told us a great way of um, identifying them. They're like two brothers. So basically they, they are a family Rifosco, uh, one with a green pedoncule, one with a red pedoncule. Um, the Rifosk in Croatia, is, uh, he said it was rather like a businessman, that uh, it goes to work every day, it sits uh, in a city bank wearing a suit and a tie, sits behind a desk, nine to five, it's very refined, very classic, very stylish. Teran is its punk wild brother, who's never done a day's work in his life. And I love that analogy. So you have this rather classic Rafosk or Rafosko, and then you have this wild Terran, which can be very bloody on the nose, very dark. Mm. Um, you get a lot of uh, long skin contact, sometimes 50, 60 day skin contact, so it's full of flavour. Um, and it's a beautiful black wine. They call it creamy. The, the black, black wine. And that's, that to us is a really exciting wine. Uh, truffles. You have fantastic white truffles and summer black truffles, um, beautiful truffle oils, lovely olive oils. Um, you have fresh fish, uh, fresh seafood. So something like a Malvasia with um, a, a shrimp risotto is, is perfect, or a spaghetti, scampi. Is it the Adriatic sole? The Adriatic sole, which is solio, a little sole that just sits on a plate. 
um, it's absolutely perfect size um, so you get a lot of grilled fresh fish with these white wines in the winter you get fantastic um, uh, wild boar salami um, a lot of the winemakers make their own salamis and prosciuttos um, in fact we were in a winery this morning and I took photos of, of um, hams hanging down in the in the garage with with all the, um, the the steel tanks on either side and then these legs hanging down and she said oh they've been there for two years and um, the, the prosciutto was absolutely beautiful so that really goes well with those red wines in the winter um, they, they even have their own soup it's called Mif Minister uh, Manestra Manestra which is Istria and it's actually it's like a soup it's a little bit like um, uh, like a minestrone I mean, it's their own minestrone it's fantastic yeah but so it goes with what the what their wines do yeah yeah it goes goes with the terrain it goes with the refreshment you know, in the winter <laughs> Thank you.